Okay, so welcome back. Um, if you've ever asked yourself, how much current can this wire withstand? And maybe you're not too sure, and maybe you go online, you go to a, a forum somewhere, or you see a YouTube video, or you see a table, and somebody says, oh, well, that's number 22, it's good for 5 amps or 8 amps. Well, that's number 18, that's good for 10 amps. And you kind of believe it, and you're, but you're not really sure why, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who look at a table and say, oh, well, it says 10 amps, so if I go to 10.1 amps, uh, it's going to melt and the house is going to burn down. So um, the goal of this video is to try and look in a little bit more depth about what those ratings are, and we're going to do some real-world measurements to see what actually happens when you put current through a wire, so you can get a reasonable um, perspective on what the limitations are and to what extent you need to just blindly believe those numbers. Now, if uh, I encourage you, if you like these videos, uh, and maybe you think they're useful for some of your friends or some others, um, I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell notification. And most of all, uh, if you think they'd be beneficial for others, mention it to others on, on the internet so they can get some benefit. That would help a lot. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some standard hookup wire. And this is something you might see on Amazon if you want to get some bench wire to hook stuff up. It's 22AWG, and according to the manufacturer's website, it's tinned copper. All right? Um, you can get a whole mess of this for like $15. It's wonderful stuff. Uh, so it's tinned copper, which means it's copper wire with some tinning on the outside to give it some strength and whatever. And it also says, the manufacturer says this is PVC insulation. Okay, so we've got 22AWG tinned copper with PVC insulation. So when you start thinking about current ratings, Let's step back and think, what would currents do to this wire? Well, um, if you've ever um, looked at high currents, you know that high currents can generate high temperatures. And if you look at my previous videos on electronics thermals, where we actually measure, you know, what temperatures you can get for low amountage of wattage through a device, these can get some very high temperatures with... Um, with current and how much power you apply. So our first thought is, well, you don't want to heat these, you don't want to put too much current because you might heat it up and, I don't know, maybe you damage the wire somehow or maybe you melt the insulation. So the first thing you got to think about is, okay, what are the ratings? What are these wires and the insulation, what are they capable of? Well, if you look online, you might see something about tinned copper that says, and ballpark, you get up around 150 degrees C, that's the maximum in-service ratings. So you don't want to heat this up past 150 degrees C. Now, what you won't see is, what does that mean? Is it going to melt? Is it going to blow up? Is the house going to burn down? Um, it just says 150 degrees C. Um, who knows? Now, the manufacturer says for this particular wire, the PVC insulation is good up to 80 degrees C. Uh-huh. So you don't want this wire, presumably, to get up near 80 degrees C because it might damage the insulation. Now, what does that mean? Well, does it mean if you get to 80.1 degrees, it's going to melt the insulation and uh, it's going to catch on fire? Who knows? Um, under what conditions? I mean, that, that depends on a lot of things. But at least we have some ballparks. So, um, based on that little bit of knowledge, you can go online and you can find a table like this that has current ratings for uh, different size wires, AWG size on the left, and this table is current ratings based on how much um, temperature your insulation can handle. Now, we've got an 80 degrees C, so we'll use this first column here, and we can see 22 AWG at 80 degrees C, it says 8 amps. Aha! Uh -huh. So the maximum you want to put through this is 8 amps, presumably. So what happens if you have 8.1 amps? Does it melt? 
Does it catch on fire and burn the house down? Uh, don't know. So we're going to have to look into that. How strict is this? Under what conditions? Um, maybe you have to worry about it. Maybe not. Maybe you can go higher than that. Who knows? So um, back in our electronics thermals, we made a, a list, a table of typical temperatures, increasing temperatures to show what their uh, relative numbers are. Uh, and we start out with normal 75 degrees ambient, which is about 24 degrees. That's normal ambient temperature. And then the human body, 98.6, which is about 37 centigrade. And outdoor temperatures, 110 Fahrenheit, which is in the 40s. And um, we measured a 5 watt resistor, uh, a 100 watt resistor with 5 watts and no airflow. And that was getting up around 45 degrees C. And then we measured a compact, compact fluorescent light bulb at 23 watts and it was around 80 degrees C and that's about the same temperature that hot glue melts and here's our 80 degrees C for the PVC insulation fits right in here where hot glue melts and also heat shrink tubing will melt around 90 degrees C so um, our PVC is about in that range and then if you go up to boiling water at 100 degrees C that's the the point at which water boils 212 Fahrenheit and generally with computers and electronics, generally 100 degrees C is pretty much a limit at which things throttle. You don't want to damage the components, so you throttle or shut down the uh, electronics. So that gives you an idea. Um, we also had a, the same 100 watt resistor with 40 watts applied and with airflow, and it got up just above that 112, 113 degrees centigrade. And here's our copper, our tin copper maximum service rating of 150. So it fits in, it's above boiling water, um, a slow oven, 160, uh, thermocouple rubber starts melting around 180, and then a 100 watt resistor when we apply 40 watts and no airflow can get up to 180, and then an iron can be up to 180, 190, a hot oven, uh, captain tape, which is thermal tape that hangs on until 260 degrees C. And then generally a soldering iron is up 350, 400 degrees C. And then you've got a candle flame and a filament uh, temperature of 100 watt bulb is way, way up. So this kind of gives you a perspective about what we're talking about for our PVC insulation and our tin copper. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bench and we're going to measure our wire and we're going to apply uh, what it said back here it said 8 amps let's apply 8 amps and see what the actual temperature comes out to be and we're going to do this with a couple of sizes of wires and we're going to plot it and see what um, what actually happens okay so what I've got here is I've got my multimeter and I've got a thermocouple and it's, it's set on degrees centigrade it's measuring normal room temperature and I have connected that thermocouple to a piece of number 22 wire and I've taken off some of the insulation and used some captain tape, which is thermal tape, to connect the um, thermocouple to touch the wire. And I also put some heat shrink over it to kind of simulate an insulation uh, to kind of um, double for this PVC insulation that I took off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply 8 amps to this and you saw in the table it says a number 22 AWG um, is rated for 8 amps. So I'm going to push 8 amps and we're going to see what the temperature uh, does over a few minutes time. So I just turn on the DC from my power supply, it's 8 amps and you can see it's starting out at 26 degrees centigrade. And it's starting to slowly creep up. It's now 27. Okay, so here we are after about four minutes or so. And the temperature has pretty much flattened out around 45 degrees centigrade. Once in a while it bounces up to 46. But as you can see, it's nowhere near the 80 degrees C that the um, 8 amps... 8 amps is supposed to give you 80 degrees C, which is the rating of the PVC. So, interesting. Now, um, you can also notice that the wire is not melting, it's not burning, it's not smoking, it seems to be okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for a larger uh, stranded. This is a number 18, 
and uh, do the same thing and I will plot those out to show what the resulting temperatures are. Okay, so since this um, PVC insulation is rated at 80 degrees C, I thought what I'd do is i take my um, soldering iron, and you see I've got it set to 80 degrees C, and I'm going to apply the soldering iron to the insulation to see what happens. So I'm applying the 80 degrees C directly to the insulation, and i um, not sure if you'll be able to see this, but really there's nothing happening, all right? It's just sliding along, it's not melting, so, huh, 80 degrees C doesn't do much. Well, maybe if we apply a higher temperature. Now, recall that boiling water is 100 degrees C, so what if we put it into some boiling water and see what happens? Okay, so here I've got a pot of boiling water, 100 degrees centigrade, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and here's my wire. And I'm going to drop the wire in the 100, and, the 100 degrees centigrade and see what happens. So it's in. Will it turn into a pool of PVC? Okay, so it's been in there about a minute. So I'm going to take it out. Um, it doesn't look like it's melted at all. So I'm going to take it out and try and pull the PVC insulation apart to see if it's damaged at all. It seems to be a little bit more malleable. See where I was holding it? It's pressed in a bit, but I don't... But as I pull it, it really doesn't seem to be damaged at all. 100 degrees C, this is rated for 80 degrees C, and um, not any immediate damage. Of course, if you left it like this for a long time, maybe that would uh, have a, a bigger effect. Okay, so here is the chart I developed showing um, the versus, t I've got time on the x-axis and on the y-axis I've got degrees centigrade. And up at 80, that is the uh, PVC, presumably the thermal uh, temperature limit of the PVC. And these two graphs down here, I've got the actual measured temperature over time of the 22 AWG and the 18 AWG stranded. And as we saw, it takes a few minutes to get up to the, the final temperature. And in both cases, those temperatures are much below what we would expect based on the ratings table. So my only point here is don't uh, immediately assume when you see a table or somebody says a rating is this, don't immediately assume it applies to your situation or every situation out there. Maybe not. Now, maybe they are using, in the tables, they're using a very conservative number. Uh, maybe they worry about, um, you know, we did it with a wire that's out in the open. If you put them into a box or a power supply or something, there's going to be an ambient that's much higher. Um, so that could affect it. So uh, depending on the situation you're using the wire in, you need to think about what the real limitations are. And you know, you can do you can do testing like I did. You can put a thermocouple and actually measure to get a feel for it. And maybe if you're doing something just for a, a test, for a couple minute test, maybe it's not a big deal. But uh, my only point here is for you to think about what's behind all this and get a little bit more detailed knowledge about what's going on instead of just assuming that somebody says something and you'll believe it. So anyway, I hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.